Almost. What's the time? Uh, what's the time on the screen? I have ten on my iPad. All right. Ready to go? Hit record. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you're sipping on some hot chocolate, having a, a coffee, and then kicking back. We just uh, want to bring God's word and presence into your house today. We'll worship together. Unfortunately, we've had to cancel the in house service this morning, but we still want to be able to worship, and it's great having technology to be able to do that. And thank you to those people who've come in. Pastor Jordan, who's come in to be able to lead us in a little time of worship. Then we're going to have some offering announcements, just like at church time, and then uh, obviously no kids' dismissal, but we'll have uh, time in God's Word and uh, it's a time of prayer. So let's just open up in a word of prayer. We do want to remember one of our missionaries. Uh, it's a, an anonymous, it's a, uh, a prayer request that I uh, wanted to go without having a name. They serve in an area that's a high-risk area, but they are having a surgery this week, and so we want to remember them in prayer. Would you join with me in prayer? And just commit this time and our missionary to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you're a God who is in control, who a God who is, who is everlasting and ever-present. Lord, I pray that as we gather together today and we are spread out, we know that you are not bound by distance, where we can come together in the Spirit even though we are absent from each other's presence. Your presence is with us and draws close. Bring harmony to us as we worship Lead with Pastor Jordan us into the presence of God. And as your word is spoken a little bit later, I pray you would affirm it and confirm it into our lives. We might apply it and live it out. I pray, Lord, you'd be with our missionary as she undergoes surgery. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen her, that you would comfort her, you would guide the doctors beyond the education and experience so she can be returned back to serving you unhinderedly. We now give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Higher than the mountains that I face Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change Is one thing remains it's one thing remains. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Yeah, your love And on and on and on and on it goes For it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid There's one thing remains it's one thing remains oh your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me yeah your love your love in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love oh, my death is pain there is nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, 
never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Yeah, your love. We need no other hiding place. Our hope is safe within your name This we know This we know You promised never to forsake What you began you will sustain This we know This we know Call upon the Lord, for He alone is strong enough to save. Rise, your shackles are no more, for Jesus Christ has broken every chain. All of the heavens and the earth Announce the fullness of your worth This we know This we know And every enemy will flee As we declare your victory this we know, this we know. I will call upon the Lord, for He alone is strong enough to save. Rise, your shackles are no more, for Jesus Christ has broken every chain I will call upon the Lord for He alone is strong enough to save Rise, your shackles are no more for Jesus Christ has broken every chain Jesus' the name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call His name. Jesus' the name above every other. All hail the power of Jesus' the name. All hail. upon the Lord for He alone is strong enough to save Rise your shackles are no more for Jesus Christ has broken every chain I will call upon the Lord for He strong enough to save. Rise, your shackles are no more, for Jesus Christ has broken every chain. I will call upon the Lord, for He alone is strong enough to save. Rise, your shackles are no more, for Jesus Christ has broken every chain.
Lord, I come and I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart, cause you're the one that guides my heart. Cause Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more, and grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, and holiness is Christ in me, and where Christ in me Cause Lord I need you Oh I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness that again. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. job, bud. Look there, Dave. Is that better?
Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 23, a very familiar passage, and um, God's put on my heart to share today. It's interesting, uh, years ago, I remember one of my kids, I was looking over my notes on a Saturday and preparing for Sunday, and I remember them coming and asking me, Dad, how do you know what to say? And uh, because it was a time crunch and I had other things I needed to do, I tried to give them a quick answer and think it would be a quick conversation. I just told them, well, God, God tells me what to say. God helps me in what to say. And thinking it would be over, but of course not. We got into this big philosophical discussion that ended pretty quickly when they looked at me and said, then why do you keep crossing things out? Uh, there's a, a time when you speak in moments like this, and even the way this happened. I had planned to speak and continue in our series on, on refresh. We've been looking at uh, surrendering to God, accepting what God, opinion and view and direction in our life, and then uh, this Sunday was supposed to be on confession. And um, confessing something when we're going in the wrong direction, admitting it, and actually confessing it and saying it, and then, uh, and then also confessing in the way that's right. But um, we're going to say that till next week. God put on my heart in this time to just share with you on Psalm 23, partly uh, because a little bit later we're going to talk about going through a valley. We've had a number of deaths and people have gone through loss and grief at this recent new number of weeks and months. And uh, there's a, just a section of this scripture that says, when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, he's with me. And, and so I just felt like speaking on that a little bit, and it kind of broadened out to, uh, generally some, just some observations in Psalm 23. And trust that when God does this, sometimes we don't understand why in the directions, but we just walk and follow and are obedient, and sometimes it's just something. Somebody watching uh, just needed to hear um, this message this morning and trust that uh, God speaks to you in your heart. The shepherd uh, psalm, Psalm 23, is one that's been important to me. It's a, it's, we know Jesus as being the good shepherd. He's referred to as the, the chief shepherd, the, the head shepherd. We also, there's a book written a number of years ago that impacted my ministry, written by McCormick and Davenport. It's called Shepherd Leadership. And so I encourage you, you may have, you may have both applications, you may have only one. But uh, typically we go to this psalm as a lamb. We go, uh, it was written by David, who was a shepherd. And uh, yet he writes in, I believe, the perspective of both a lamb, like the lambs that he was taking care of, as well as in the perspective of the shepherd. And he knew that perspective as well, because he obviously took care of his father-in-law's sheep and was a, a good shepherd himself. He was, a, he was a shepherd when he was anointed as king. He was out looking after sheep. Uh, on, the, on the brink of that significant moment for his life. And so he writes this psalm in Psalm 23, I believe drawing from two aspects. Drawing from his knowledge of what it is to be a shepherd, drawing from his knowledge of what it is to look after sheep and what the sheep need. And so today as we go to it, you might draw from, from the perspective as we typically do, the lamb, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or perhaps maybe you want to take the perspective that has been meaningful to me over the last number of years and has been highlighted by McCormick and Davenport in their book, Shepherd Leadership. And that is to take the perspective of a shepherd. That this book can also be seen as the, the job description, if you will, of, of a pastor or of a shepherd. And, uh, and perhaps e both of those can be a way that you can draw some application today. Shepherd... Uh, David knew very well, was, was one who would care, one who would be with, one who would feed and water the sheep, one who would protect them, one who would guide them in, away from the things that were dangerous and toward things that had provision. He was one that would, when he would count, he would know his sheep and he would know when one was missing and he would actually go out to find them. We have many references of that in scripture. His life would, would be involved most of the time the countryside, being out, uh, and it also involved a lot of, of alone time. No one to talk to, alone with his thoughts, and, and perhaps maybe, for David obviously, alone with his God. It's afforded him many opportunities to, to talk to God. Over the years, I have found my place for this is usually in the car driving. If I turn off the stereo, if I turn off the noise around me, the phone, and I just talk to God. I've had friends who were farmers and their place was hours and hours in times of cultivating or in times of harvest they would spend inside the combine or in the tractor. That would be their place where they would spend their countryside where they would talk to God. Others have found it while well, it's jogging or going for a walk or finding a quiet place. 
near, uh, near a sh- on a shore by a lake. I'm not sure where your place is, but you need to have a place. That's that solitude place, that place of quietness, that place where you can find solitude, a place to talk to and hear from God. Psalm 23 is a testimony of David. A testimony, and he uses beautiful painted word pictures to describe what it was like to be a lamb of God and what it was important it was for him to know his shepherd. I want to start a few observations. Number one, a heart for God. Don't miss a simple pronoun in this first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. Not the shepherd. He is the shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He is God Almighty. He is all of those things. But don't miss the fact that David is just not making a theological statement here. He's making a personal statement. The Lord is my shepherd. Now this is important, and I'll refer to it a little bit later. I'll explain why you need to know him. Not just he is, yeah, I believe in God, but you need to know him as your shepherd. The Lord is shepherd to me, he's saying. The Lord cares for me. The Lord watches over me. The Lord, the Lord comes and finds me. The Lord draws me close. The Lord provides for me. Our experience with God can never be vital until it's personal. And if you wait until you have problems before you cultivate a personal relationship, you'll find yourself unprepared for struggle. The description of my shepherd. The Bible is full of this as it describes not only God as he shepherds us, but also God incarnate, God in person through how Jesus conducted himself. Luke 15 talks about how the shepherd, when he realizes one is lost, goes and finds it. And when he finally finds the lamb, he puts it on his shoulders, he carries it, and he rejoices. And he comes back and he tells all his friends and his neighbors, rejoice with me. He throws on a party. He says, the one that was lost is found. I have found my lamb. He is the shepherd that's touched by sickness. He's the shepherd that recognizes distance and comes out and seeks us to find us. It's the same kind of shepherd heart that when when, when Adam had sinned and Eve had sinned and they were recognizing their mistake and recognized what, what disobedience had done to them and separated them from God, they went and hid themselves. They separated themselves. What's the next thing? Jesus did not, God did not come looking for them to condemn them or criticize them or rebuke them. The next thing, the first question of the Bible is God coming out and saying, Adam, where are you? I miss you. There's distance. You're you're separate from me. You're you're too far away. Come close. Come back. It's that same heart of the shepherd. In the very beginning of the Bible, in the first account of someone who had sinned that is present here today, if you have walked a little bit away, if you have separated yourself, you'd find yourself distanced from God a little bit. It's the same voice of God That in Luke 15, the shepherd runs and tries to find you. That voice of God, the Spirit of God, even over the internet, through Facebook Live, where you're sitting right where you are, it says, come back to me. It's been a while. That Luke 15 talks about how he goes out. And when he finds the lamb, he just brings the lamb in close. He's a God who comforts in times of tribulation, knows our name, recognizes us, and personally comes to find us. And he weeps over his sheep, especially in their despair. A heart for people. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. When we see Jesus living out the shepherd heart of God, we see him taking time for people. Recently at a funeral, I quoted a lot of Dr. Zeus quotes. One of them was a quote that was written on a tapestry by a beautiful young girl that has gone to be with her Lord. It just feels like too soon, only 17 years old. But she had written out the words of Dr. Zeus. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Time. We all have a little bit of time. Jesus took time. Never in a hurry. But it always seemed like it was on the way. On the way to heal a young girl. He ministers to a a woman who is having an issue with blood. It always seems like it's on the way. On the way here, he... He ministers to this individual, touches that one, or has a word for this person, corrects that one, speaks to a crowd on the way. He always took time for people. Even when other people had ignored 
them. Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house for tea. Let's take some time. Or get the kids away. We're doing important stuff like theology and talking to God. Oh, bring the children here. I've got time for children. He had time for the rich and the poor, the familiar, the foreigner, the man, the woman, the adult, the child, the near, the far. He took time. That's the shepherd heart of God. Five Minute Ministry is another book that impacted me a number of years ago. How important just taking a couple minutes. Sometimes it's just recording someone's significant event. The fact that they're going for surgery on a particular day and you... You type it into your calendar so you can pray with them and let them know. And then take the couple minutes on that day to pray for them and send them a text and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Taking the time. The shepherd's heart for people. We have it throughout scripture. When he saw the multitude, it's almost as if when he saw the flock in Matthew chapter 9, it says he was moved with compassion. Or in Isaiah, it talks about the shepherd will feed his flock He will gather the lambs in his arms and he will carry them close and he will lead those that have young. It also talks about the shepherd's courage. His willingness to go so far in his care for his sheep that he would lay his life down for them. We're given that same instruction. We know this is how much God loves us. No one has greater love than this than laying their life down. But notice the makes me. A sheep without shepherd, are in a vulnerable position. And sometimes, sheep think they know better than the shepherd. Ever think you know better than God? I mean, even when we're praying, sometimes we pray and we try to tell him how he should answer our requests. As if he needs the tip. When we go our own way, we are vulnerable. Ever try to do things your own way? Be independent? On my way here, I was able to shovel my driveway. That was not a problem. The problem is, is I live kind of downhill, a number of streets, and you kind of keep turning left and keep going down. I come out of my driveway. The problem is I was driving a Civic a little bit low to the ground. I have snow tires on, but I found myself pushing snow. Because no one else had gone there, there was no tracks, and so uh, snow built up, and I found myself plowing. I got stuck. I didn't even get out of our little circle where we live. I had to rock back and forth and rock back and forth. A couple other people were going to help, but I was able to get it going. I got to the top of the hill, and then I had to turn. Well, of course, turning, and there was a bunch of snow there as well. I got stuck again, first stop sign. Again, I tried to rock it, get it out myself, get it out myself. I was able to get by again. I turned up, next street, stop sign. I got stuck again. This time, I couldn't get it out. Back and forth, back and forth. I just got myself... More and more stuck, pushing snow forward, a barrier. As I backed up, pushed snow backwards, a barrier. Eventually, I couldn't get out. Somebody else finally came. It wasn't much of a push. They got me going, and I made it here. The point is this. Every now and then, we can get by, but we find ourselves pushing, and the wall getting greater, and we just get stuck. We think we can make it on our own. We think we can solve it. And and even when we get so desperate that we finally admit, I can't handle it myself, we go to God. Well, why would we go to him at that point and try to tell him how to do it our way? When we come to him and say, God, I'm at the end. He's saying, good. This is when I can begin to do what only I can do. Notice how he says, makes me. When we go our own way, we're vulnerable. And so he tries to, and he encourages, and he corrects, because we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We're very much like sheep. In fact, it's even quoted in Psalm 100. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The distance between the shepherd and the sheep determines the potential danger for the sheep. The greater the distance the greater the danger. He leads us to supply. He's not only leading us away from danger, he's leading us towards green pastures and still waters. Green pastures has a, 
has a connotation of contentment, an image of, of satisfaction. Leading us beside still waters is, and makes me lie down is imagery of peace and rest. Ever not agree with God about rest? Ever just keep going and going and going and God is trying to get your message and saying, would you slow down and take some time? You're too busy. And you stubbornly not listen to him. I've had in moments in my life done this. When I've just, things have gotten busier and busier and it just seems to become a whirlwind. I find that God often, and we talk about being slain in the spirit or when someone is, is laying down at an altar, I have often found myself slain in circumstances. Where I'm in a situation or a circumstance where I'm just stuck. Where, whether I get really sick or, a, or something around me happens and I have no choice but to stop. Sometimes, I have had to have God make me lie down in green pastures and beside still waters. Come unto me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I'll give you rest. We need rest. God made us that way. When we don't rest properly, we become vulnerable. How many, you're cranky when you don't rest? Or maybe you start missing things, forgetting things, things that you don't normally miss or forget. We cannot do what we do forever. I was having a conversation just not too long ago with someone, and, and it just popped in my mind. For those of you that play video games, NHL 18, 19, or way back when, I remember playing EA Sports. I think it was like 2004. But, but when your, your player would be on the ice and playing, he'd be the best player. I had Wayne Gretzky. I always wanted to pick Wayne Gretzky, even though I love the Leafs. Wayne Gretzky was amazing. He was good at defense. He always seemed to be able to score when he shot it, went in. You wanted him as your player. But gradually when they started to develop the, the game, and as the years would go on, they got better and better at developing systems in the game that would make your player grow tired. When they first came out, he never tired. It wasn't realistic. But as they developed the game, you can have the best player, but at some point, there's a tipping point. And when you have the best player on the ice, he's more of a hindrance than a benefit because he's too tired. And he needs to go off and change so someone else can come on and he can rest. Life is like this. It means that we're created to regularly have that day of rest or that sabbatical, that recharge. And if you aren't regularly recharging, it's just as simple as, as, as take a shift, take a rest, and you'll get back out there right away. But if you don't take care of that, we'll find ourselves depleted in resources, stumbling and fumbling around. Come to me, all you who need rest. Sometimes he loves us so much, he puts us in situations and circumstances to make it clear to us that we need to rest, and we need to rest now. We need to learn to cultivate quietness. Be still and know I'm God. There's also a broken heart. There's correction in this psalm. How do we remember the phrase? I remember a disciplined phrase from my parents. This hurts me more than it does you. I remember thinking, not in the same spot. The fact is, we all go astray. And when we do, and we know as parents, we need to correct. We need to discipline. If we don't, for instance take a child's hand or correct them when they're about to run across the street. If we don't do that when they're young and impressionable, then they will grow up without a respect for a busy road and put themselves in dangerous situations. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. A fence at the top of a, of a cliff is much better than a hospital at the bottom. We need to do preventative work. And when people are in a position, and when we find ourselves in a position that's at risk, we need correction. Especially if it's preventative. It needs to be done in love. It needs to be done restoratively and in relationship, but that needs to be done. It does not make it easy. Sheep stray. We stray. Most animals are able to have like an inner sense to get themselves home. My, grand, my father talks about growing up on my grandpa's farm and having horses that would be able to, no matter where they were, make their way back. We've been, and I used to have a, a beagle, 
We'd go out in the woods and he would run and chase rabbits or deer. I'm, I was amazed at how miles and miles they can run, but they can make them way back. We would, we would lose them. However, they were out having fun. The dog's name was Sergeant. I remember one time we were back in the cabin and, and uh, we were enjoying the warmth and then somebody went outside to get some fresh air and there he was, made his way all the way back. There are animals that have their ability, have an internal compass. Sheep are not such an animal. If they get lost, they require the assistance of a shepherd to make it back. He's broken for the lost. He goes out and finds them, as Luke 15 says. He has tools, a rod and staff, to help in this lostness. It can not only protect us from the enemy, but it can also pull us out of danger when we're lost. And it's the rod and staff that can also keep us in line. I remember in Africa, we would go and you see a, a boy watching his herd and keeping it away from the road so it doesn't get hit. And, and just a young boy, he'd have a, a rod, a branch or a stick, and, and he wouldn't even have to touch the animals. He would just wave it this way or that way. And you can see the whole group of them kind of be guided towards greener pastures or away from danger. God disciplines us not just to correct us, in a way move us away from that which is wrong. It's not to punish us, to make us feel pain. This world has enough pain. But it's to keep us going in the right direction. You lead me in the paths of righteousness. So yes, he has a rod and a staff. They comfort us and move us in the way that's right. He restores us, it's true. But more than just pulling us out when we're lost and finding us, he then cares enough to help us go in the way that's right. Steer us clear of lostness. Lastly, a faithful heart. I have two more points, a faithful heart and then a servant heart. A faithful heart. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He is with me. The valley of death in Palestine is, like a, is just beyond the hills of Bethlehem. And it goes down towards the Dead Sea, which is at, at, at 1,300 feet below sea level. So you can imagine, from a mountain to 1,300 below, there is some serious cliffs, some treacherous terrain. In Bible times, in this area, there would be bears and lions, hyenas and robbers. The shadows and the caves would be full of unknown danger. You could probably name this the valley of worry and fear. David didn't worry or fear because he knew that as he entered into it, he was with his shepherd. He knew his shepherd, he knew who he was, and he knew his shepherd would not leave him. David didn't leave his sheep in the valley, and neither would his shepherd. But this goes back to the Lord is my shepherd. Why it's important to have a my shepherd. Notice, when David is speaking of green pastures, he says, the Lord. But when he speaks of the valley, he says, you. He's not speaking of the shepherd in this time. He's speaking to the shepherd. Maybe you're in a situation you need to speak to the shepherd. Say, God, I know you're God, but you speak to him. Not say, the Lord is a shepherd, the Lord is mighty, the Lord is a healer, but say, God, you're my healer. You're my shepherd. You're my friend. You're my Emmanuel. I remember one time when we were going through a significant challenge in our family, sitting before doctors in a room when they give us a pretty tough news. I remember looking at my wife, my wife saying to me, what are we going to do? And I've said this before, but I'll never forget it. We've said it many times since that day. What are we going to do? I don't know. We looked at each other and we said, I said, but you, me, and God, we're going to get through this together. I didn't even realize what I was saying. I just said it. But when I said it, I felt my spirit lift and the burden go. And I, see my, I saw my wife countenance change. You, me, and God, in this valley, no matter how deep, no matter how treacherous, no matter, no matter how many shadows and caves, we're going to get through this together. You, me, and God. In verse 5, he says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Wait a minute. 
If he's with me in the valley of the shadow of death, why didn't he just take care of it for me? Yes, he is the God who can move mountains. But every now and then, and most often actually, he moves mountains and hands you a shovel. He wants to be with you. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He just doesn't fight your battles. He is the Lord your God. He will fight battles for us. But he fights battles with us. There's a big difference. We want him to come and take over and we'll kick back and let him do his thing. And he does do what only God can do. But that does not mean that we can forego our responsibilities. Oftentimes there's a part for us to do. I love this here. And for leaders, this is a great lesson too. Don't just take over parents. If your child's going through a problem or struggle at school, just don't take it over for them. Rescue them every time. Fight their battles for them. We were told a phrase young when we were early in parenting. Don't prepare the path for the child. Prepare the child for the path. We'll all go through difficult times, treacherous paths, valley moments. But if you're a parent and you have someone, a loved one going through that, prepare them. Lay a table before them as they face their challenges. This is what God does with us. If you're facing a challenge, he is there with you in that battle. Simply reach out to him, call out to him. He will help you be there for you. I'm not sure what your valley experience is. But if you're worried, anxious, afraid, or troubled, God gives you peace. John Chapter 14 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. Does your valley cause you to be worried about the future? You need to know that God will personally guide you. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Do you feel alone? He'll never leave you. Deuteronomy says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Is your valley causing you to become discouraged, have a dark cloud over you? God will comfort you. The Lord is close to those who have a broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And finally, do you find yourself facing opposition? Know this. If God is for you, who can be against you? I want to pray for you. Then Jordan's going to sing, Lord, I need you again. As I pray, I invite you to talk to your God, to your shepherd. If you're experiencing fear, worry, speak to him. Speak to your shepherd. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our personal God. We thank you that you came and when you sent an answer, it wasn't in form of a command or in a text. It was in the form of a person who could relate, who could weep with those who weep, who could fellowship. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he came not to be served, but to serve. And he came to seek and save those people who were lost. Lord, as we sing this song, we sing it to you. We sing it as our testimony. We sing it as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I come and I confess, bowing here, I find my rest.
past and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart and Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you sing that again Lord I need you Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Because holiness is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. And holiness is Christ in me. And Lord, I need you. softly. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one. Yeah. time our we're gonna let you go but today in the change up of things you got enough time even now normally we'd be getting out of church around quarter after half past you've saved yourself the time of driving in driving home there's no excuses today if you normally come into church on a Sunday morning you got about 45 minutes still the distance between you and your shepherd doesn't hurt to draw a little closer today no matter how close you feel you are draw a little closer today spend some time with your shepherd spend some time not just talking about him or reading about him but talking to him spend some time listening to him and then following him he's your shepherd he will lead you in the paths that are right bless you as you go